Good morning. Welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we're leading people to experience God's love, know Jesus Christ, and grow in his image. My name is Thomas. I'm one of the pastors at Bethany, and I'm excited that you are joining us from your home. I'm excited for all of you here that are joining us in the worship center. Uh, We're going to worship Jesus today. It's going to be a good day. So before we do that, just a few reminders. Uh, First, make sure you check in online, uh, registering your attendance with us. Uh, You can also find a place online to stay connected. So if you're looking for ways to stay connected, if you're struggling, uh, you're you're in good company, and we have a lot of opportunities for people to reconnect and stay connected during this time. Also invite you to check out our giving page where you can look at ways that you can give online. Uh, You can also give by mailing a check into the church. That's always an option, but giving online is a very easy way to support the mission and ministry of Bethany. Uh, And then we have a prayer page, and so you can go on there, submit a prayer request online. On Sunday mornings, you can also call in. We have a prayer phone line where someone from Bethany, a trained prayer leader, will will be available to pray with you. If you need some extra prayer this morning, uh, give them a call between, between 9 and noon this morning. That number is on the website. We have a few things coming up that I want to let you know about. Some exciting opportunities for staying connected to the Bethany family. First, tonight at 5 o'clock in the parking lot, we are going to do a trunk or treat. This is going to be a safe and family-friendly way to do some trick-or-treating. We will be able to stay social distanced. Uh, Everyone will be wearing a mask, and if your costume includes a mask, even better. Uh, We have some people that are going to be decorating their trunks, and then we'll have candy for kids to take home. Uh, That's from 5 to 6 this afternoon in the Bethany parking lot. So uh, come and, and enjoy that with us. Dress up in your costume, or if you don't like that, then you don't have to wear a costume. Uh, Invite your friends and neighbors, because this is the kind of thing that a lot of people might enjoy doing. We're also going to have music and a free hot dog meal for everyone that shows up. So, Trunk or Treat, Bethany Parking Lot, 5 o'clock. Right after that, we are going to have an outdoor worship time. That outdoor worship time will be like the other ones that we've been doing for a few months now. Uh, You can bring a lawn chair if you want to sit outside in the chair section. Or if you want to just stay in your car, uh, we will be able to put that music through your FM radio and you can stay in your car and worship right there from your car. The worship tonight starts at 6.30. Uh, Get there a little early to set up and get a good spot. We'll also have a dessert truck there. I I think it's Taco Sweets. It's an ice cream taco truck. So ice cream tacos and worship in Jesus and the weather should be great. So bring a lawn chair and... Join us for outdoor worship tonight. I don't think I could sell it any more than that. (laughs) I want to remind you, we are continuing to uh, do a Thanksgiving missions project sponsored by Student Ministries. It's the Thanksgiving bags. Uh, These red bags have a list of food items. So if you can pick one up and then fill those and bring them back, all the detailed instructions are on here, or you can go to our website uh, and, and find those instructions too. But these are going to go to families in our area that are in need of Thanksgiving meals. And so we need people to, to get bags and fill them up. I think we also need people to sign up to deliver the bags later in November. So look at our website for that information. You can pick them up here if you're here in person. You can pick them up at Outdoor Worship tonight. Uh, Or you can just go get a list of stuff from our website and buy that. You don't even have to pick up a bag. Uh, Last couple announcements. Uh, Remember, next next weekend, uh, it's the daylight, it's one of those daylight savings time weekends. I can't ever remember if we're going into or coming out of it, but I do know we gain an hour. It's the good one, right? (laughs) So remember, next weekend, to set your clocks back, we're going to fall back, uh, and you get to sleep in an hour before coming to work coming to church in the morning, so that's good. And then finally, I want to remind you, to check your email. If you are not getting emails from Bethany, you'll want to contact us and make sure that we can get you set up to get those emails. We know that some people get those emails in their spam folder, or they go to your Google Promotions folder if you have a Gmail account. Uh, we are going to be uh, coming out in the next week or two with some new opportunities, so ways that we are going to have uh, an increased involvement in our Sunday morning offering here, uh, some outdoor space for groups to meet, some safe children and youth programming, um, and both worship services, both 9.30 and 11 o'clock, happening every Sunday. So that's going to start November 8th. Yeah. Uh, And that's going to start November 8th. We are committed to doing that in a safe way, but we're also very excited about uh, 
the ability to be around each other in a safe way, to see one another, uh, to be reconnected with our Bethany family. So look for those emails, make sure that you're getting our emails and contact us, let us know if you have any questions. So with that, uh, let us stand and worship Jesus together. Life, I want to live a life. I want to live a life. I want to live a life. I don't want to live a life. Don't want to live a life. Cause I want to live a life and you make me alive. the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three and one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. And 
he is our judge and our defender suffered and crucified forgiveness is in you descended into darkness you rose in glorious light forever seated high you uh, right where you're at just to bow your heads get in a position that makes you uh, open before God maybe hold your hands out God we just proclaim that you are good your mercy endures forever we celebrate love of our perfect father in heaven we celebrate this morning that we have been saved and purified by the precious blood of Jesus. And we celebrate this morning that you have given your Holy Spirit in each of our lives and all around us, that you give us a comforter. So God, let us rest in the comfort and peace of your Spirit right now. We ask, would you come, God, and wash away our troubles? Would you come and wash away the chaos that we find ourselves in? Would you come and let us stand on, on you, Jesus, the rock? Help us to, to stand on you and not on the shifting sands of the world around us that cannot hold us up. We need something more solid than that. So, God, we give ourselves to you during this time. We say, come and have your way in my life. The places that need your healing, the places where you, we need you to come and give us more confidence, come into the places where we have relationships that need to be reconciled, Come into the places of our life where we feel hopeless or at the end of our rope. 
we come to you, God, we say, help us. Be our helper, be our savior, be our rescuer, God. God, we come to you and we have a refuge in you as we come together and worship. But we also know that you don't just call us to come here. You also send us out into the world. And so while you are ministering to us right now, we also pray, God, would you prepare us to go and live in the world around us, shining your light to all who we encounter, being the salt, the God flavoring, so that we could bless others. God, show us how we could bless our neighbors. Show us how we could live as a perpetual blessing to our family members, even those under our same roof, how we could love them with the love of Christ. Show us how we could be, be a blessing to those that we disagree with, those who the world might say are our enemies, but who we know you have called us to love. And God, we pray that you would take this church, Bethany, that you would fill us with your spirit, and you would continue to use this congregation for your good in the world, that Christ could be shared, that the world could be blessed, that people could come to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. God, we pray for all of this with the words that our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you're just now joining us online, welcome. We're so excited that you are choosing to worship with us today. Uh, Jesus is here, uh, and he's with you right, right where you are at. I'll remind you just to check our website. There's a, a number of links that you can click on to, to register for your attendance, to give, to offer prayer requests. And we have a number of events coming up, and I'll just invite you to go to the homepage and look at the banner that's scrolling across. Most of them are, are on there. Um, we are celebrating that God is still at work at Bethany. Uh, even in the midst of a pandemic, God continues to do great things. And so today, we are celebrating the incredible generosity of Bethany leaders as they have already committed to pledging their tithes and offerings for Bethany Ministries in 2021. Uh, our administrative board, our lay leaders, and our staff members and pastors have turned in their pledges towards the new budget. So far, we have around $826,000 pledged for 2021 already just with the administrative board and the staff. And so that's something that we are celebrating. Uh, we are celebrating the ways that God continues to be faithful. And in this moment right now, as we take up an offering, we're inviting you to consider how is God calling you to faithfully give and to be generous so the mission and ministry of Bethany can continue on. Will be. 
be a church ready for you every heart longing for our king we sing even so come lord jesus come even so come lord jesus come there will be justice all will be new your name forever faithful and true jesus is coming soon like a bride waiting for her groom will be a church ready for you every heart longing for Please be seated. So we're coming uh, to the last Sunday of this series on God's faithfulness and our response to that and uh, talking about living out what we believe. Uh, and uh, if you've been with us uh, before, we're glad you're back. And if you're just joining us now, we want to welcome you to Bethany United Methodist Church where we are leading people to experience the love of God, uh, to know Jesus Christ, and to grow in his image. We're glad you're with us. And uh, if you're watching on a computer, uh, there's a live uh, chat on the side, and you can ask questions or interact with our hosts there. Uh, otherwise, uh, I invite you to go to our website or to uh, call in on the prayer line if you have prayer requests during this time. Uh, we're glad that you're here this morning, and as we begin this, I'm going to go back, I'm going to touch a piece of scripture. This is right at the beginning of Mark's gospel. Uh, Jesus has just begun his ministry. He's been baptized in the Jordan, gone through his time of temptation. And Mark tells us, uh, after John was arrested, that Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. 
repent and believe in the good news. Uh, that come near phrase in there in the, in the Greek is literally, it's a, the word literally means it's so close you can touch it. It's, it's right there, you can reach out and put your hand on it. And, and then to repent uh, is that, that total change in who we are. And to believe is a, a Greek word, it's a pistao, and uh, it, it has this active sense to it. It's not simply that you think it's true, but it's to think it's true, to be persuaded of it, it's to have confidence in that truth. It's to entrust yourself to that truth. Uh, not simply to say, I believe this, but actually live in belief of that. And so this morning, we've talked about for the past several weeks, God's faithfulness uh, in the past, uh, in, in the present, God's promise of that continuing in the future. And, and the question I want to ask you this morning is really simple. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Let's pray. Almighty God. We thank you for gathering us here this morning. We thank you for your presence with us. Uh, I just ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you believe? Now that question is going to weave its way through a, a number of stories in scripture as you go through. Uh, Philip said to him, this is, this is the last night he's with his disciples. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I don't speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. Then you hear that, that initial kind of disappointment and then that, that thing, do you not believe? Do you not? You've been with me all this time and do you not believe? In Matthew's Gospel, and there's the story of the healing of the two blind men. And, and, and as he goes out from the house, two blind men follow him crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this, the healing? In John's gospel, there's this wonderful story of uh, the blind man that's healed, and, and, and he's been blind since birth in the village, and, and the village takes him uh, to the elders and uh, the, the heads of the temple, and, and they say, you know, here he is, and they're interrogating him basically about how this happened. Uh, there's a first round of questioning. He goes back out. They call him back in a second time to question him, and they say to him, give glory to God. We, we know that this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And the man answered, I, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I've, I've told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. And the man answered, here's an astonishing thing. You don't know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes? We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world begun has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And they answered him, you were born entirely in sins, and you're trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe? And then in John's Gospel, when he comes to the village of Bethany and uh, where Lazarus has, uh, has died and, and where he's going to raise him up, uh, he's greeted by Lazarus' sisters, Mary, Martha, and each of them approaches him with the same question, which is, you know, Lord, if, if you'd been here, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, kind of a, you know, where were you kind of question. And Jesus responds and says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe the stowo? Do you believe it's true? Do you have confidence in it? Are you willing to entrust your life to that truth? It's a fundamental question. So um, 
And the Fly and Walendas are a uh, premier high wire act. Uh, they've been in a lot of the great circuses and, and things, and you've probably seen news articles about them. You may remember that one of them actually walked a high wire between some of the, uh, the skyscrapers in New York City a number of years ago. And, and uh, about a decade ago, uh, the, the figurehead of the family, Nick Walenda, uh, actually decided that he would walk a high wire over Niagara Falls. And so he, they strung this uh, wire, this cable, uh, wire is not really the right word for it, cable across uh, from the U.S. to the Canada side of Niagara Falls, and they anchored it. And as you can see, uh, it's, it's not a small cable, it's su substantial. Uh, it has to be drawn with a tremendous amount of tension. And you can see there, there's rods that hang from these cables to stabilize them so they're not swaying back and forth and moving around and all. And yet, I don't know about you, but... When I look at these pictures of him walking across there, it makes my palms sweaty. Just, just makes me uncomfortable, right? Just, just think about it. you're on that wire and all that water's going down under you. And, and he, he, Nick had to have a tremendous trust in what he was doing. He had to trust that that cable was going to be tensioned and strong enough and tight enough. He had to trust that it was put up in a way that it wouldn't move or sway around under him. He had to trust uh, in the skill of those who had installed it, and, and he had to bring his own skills and knowledge to it and trust in that. And he had to trust that, you know, the, the gravity was not going to change any at all because he was going to have to balance on that. And, and, you know, to walk across that wire is an absolute act of trust and confidence. Now, when I look at this photo in particular, and I see that water going, and I'm thinking, as you're walking across that, what you're, what you're in the middle of is this tremendous amount of noise from the water falling uh, and spray and the motion of all of that going underneath you. And I'm thinking, how do you, how do you not get vertigo? <laughs> I mean, how in the middle of that do you not totally freak out and, and lose and fall? I mean, how do you do that? I mean, that is, to me, that is a picture of pistao. You know, you, you've got to have absolute faith, confidence, and trust, or else you're coming off that wire. And, and that's really what it means for us to live as Christians, especially in times that are difficult. Because there is so much noise in the world right now. There is so much noise in the world right now. There's so many things moving around. It has been so difficult. And, and the prince of this world would love for you to become so distracted by that noise and by all the commotion that you would lose faith and fall. And Jesus keeps saying, do you believe? Believe the good news. Believe, trust the good news. And that wire will hold you up across this roaring cataract of water. I mean, it's a tremendous act of faith to come across this and and it's a beautiful image for for what God calls us to to be confident because you know even in the midst of the craziness we've lived through this year God still calls us to be his people who believe who have faith who have confidence so there's a story in Mark's gospel and in this a father brings a son to Jesus to have him healed and they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit in the boy saw Jesus, immediately convulsed the boy. He fell on the ground. He rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It's often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you're able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. And the desperation of his, his plea, if you're able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you're able, all things can be done for the one who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe. Help my own belief. You know, it's interesting that, that God sometimes understands how hard it is for us to stay on that wire. That God understands how hard it is for us not to get distracted. That God understands how hard it is for us to have that kind of trust. I, I believe... Help my unbelief. Block out the sound of the water. Block out the vision of it flowing past. Help me to remain focused on you. Help my unbelief. 
And when Jesus saw the crowd coming together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. The father's trust and confidence was not absolute, but he knew enough to say, I believe help my unbelief and sometimes in the midst of all that we're in that that may be the prayer you need to offer up god i can't see how this is going to happen i don't understand this help me to remain confident in you paul talks about it in a little different way in romans when he says the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. It's one of my favorite passages. So I, don't, I don't know what your life is like, but there's points in my life where I, I really am at that point. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to pray. I don't know what the words are. And, and, and really all you can say at that point is, oh God, help me. And when you're in those desperate kind of places in life, you know, when the job's gone away and the finances have crashed, when the spouse comes in and says, I'm done, I want out, when the child has been arrested, when everything seems to go wrong all at once, when a devastating death has struck your family, you know, sometimes in those moments we don't, we don't know what the right words are. I found myself a couple times even saying to someone, I'm not really sure what I need to pray about. I don't, I don't even know what the words are I need to use right now. I, can't, I just can't get a hold of this. It's, it's so hard. And God says, you know, okay, just, just, just come to me. I, I understand your weakness. And God himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. I mean, when Jesus calls us to believe, it's, it's not this kind of thing where God says, believe, and, you know, if you don't, tough luck. God says, listen, you know, if, if you're having struggle, come to me anyway. I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. I don't know how to pray. I, I, I don't know what it even start. I'm just bringing this to you, God. And God is with us. Have enough confidence to know that even in our weakness, God is with us. You read through those stories in Scripture, and, and they, they turn when, when belief is found. Okay, I don't know what I just did here, Frank, but can you bring my next slide? No, thank you so much. So in Matthew, do you believe I'm able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, see that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout the district. Jesus comes to the blind man that's been driven out from the court. And he says, do you believe in the son of man? And, and he answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, you have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Mary and Martha, uh, do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And in all those stories, that's the question, do you believe? And sometimes we struggle with that, and sometimes it's easier than, than others. But in all those cases, if we bring that to God, God does amazing things in the midst of the difficulty we live in. And, and even in this time, in 2020, and I've had conversations with numbers of you who have said, I'm cheer to be over. Even in the midst of that, do you believe? Do you have enough confidence to trust your life into God's hands? I'm going to bring you a word from our sister Nancy, who's going to talk about uh, coming uh, into this congregation uh, at a moment in her life when there were challenges. Good morning. My name is Nancy Wright, and I have been a member of Bethany for the last 16 years. This morning I was asked to talk about living what we believe. 
16 years ago, I moved to Austin after being unemployed for five months. I was living off credit cards and very little savings, but I wanted to be down here to be closer to family. My mother, who is a member of Bethany, brought me to the Saturday night's uh, church service. And that night, that first night, I met Christy and Tina from the Crossroads Sunday School class, and they invited me to the class the next day. Looking back, it was definitely a God thing. Um, that class, you know, I was on top of learning more about how God works in our lives and how to apply it, also was very involved with missions. And that was something that I didn't get very involved with at my last church. But this Sunday school class was very involved with hands-on housing, and Easter basket Sunday, and um, some of the food drive work. And so I got involved with that, which was very satisfying. When the stewardship campaign came up that year, Ted and Susie Jordan, who were leaders of the class, wanted to remind us all that, you know, although tithing was very important, that just as important was our gifts, our service, and our presence at this church. And it, it really struck me at that time because I still didn't have a job. And I was trying to figure out, because I'm in accounting, so I felt that it was very important to give something <laughs> to the church. So when I filled out my card that year, the amount that I put down, in a lot of ways it was nominal, but it was a fortune to me. And, um, but I handed it in and prayed that I would actually be able to afford it the next year. The next year came and I actually ended up getting a job and I was able to pay off what my pledge was for, from the previous year. And I felt very satisfied with all that. But was just as equally satisfying was all the other work that I was doing. All the work with the missions, as well as I got involved with the sound and media team. So I'm part of the group that does the uh, slides up and back. And so what living what, what we believe is to me so is it's about the money, but it's also about our time and our presence, being good to one another and reaching out to people, both in our church, even outside our church, to show them God's love and God's wish for all of us to be happy and active. Thank you. Even in a time when she wasn't sure how she was going to manage it, she made the commitment. I can't see if she's back up there working the slide desk this morning, but uh, she's one of our regular volunteers in our sound and media team still. I believe Hands on Housing actually did a project yesterday uh, here in Austin, so I think they're still uh, actively engaged in that process as well, in that mission as well. This morning in particular, about the financial end of that, but I want you to very much hear her word about presence and witness and serving, uh, because those are equally part of what it means to believe. It, it's, it's to entrust your life, to have confidence. And I know in a time like this with the pandemic, it, it is challenging. Nancy came at a time when, uh, you know, she didn't have any idea how she might be able to live into that and did so very well and very powerfully and has become a very powerful part of the ministry of this congregation. So I want to encourage you to listen to what she tells you. Um, as we're moving forward, uh, as Thomas mentioned, our leadership has been engaged in that process already, and we have 118 commitments from them for next year for 826,000. Um, that's a good start, but it is a start, and we are inviting all of you to do that, and those of you who are not present with us physically uh, also to be involved in that. The easiest way to make that commitment is online, but uh, you should be receiving things in the mail. Mail's a little sketchy. Uh, sometimes uh, or by email so keep your eyes open for that if you don't see anything in the coming week let us know but uh, if you go to the website you can go to uh, the page where you can find at the top the the link that says giving that blue word at the top which again will take you to this page and you can see there's a button there for electronic estimate of giving and it will take you to this page where you can put your commitment in and, and for whatever amount and in whatever way you want to give that 
so uh, I want to encourage you to do that as part of walking on that wire because here's the deal. You know, 2021 is going to come. We're going to be on the other side of all of this. Uh, we'll be past all of the noise. We'll be hopefully at some point past the pandemic in 2021. Uh, the ministries of the church will be, be reopening. Uh, things will be happening. And uh, your financial support is what's going to enable us to respond to God as God calls us uh, as we move into 2021. Now, now, now a year after Nick Walenda went across, about a year, uh, across Niagara Falls, uh, he strung a wire and crossed the Grand Canyon. Now, you might say he's crazy. <laughs> Kind of feels that way, doesn't it? Uh, but, but, you know, there's always another challenge. There's always another challenge. I just want to hear, and until Christ returns, there will always be another challenge. You know, we have elections every four years. So whatever happens this fall, remember, we're going to do it all over again in four years. Uh, we have uh, epidemics that come and go. Wars will continue to happen. Things will continue to get disrupted in our lives. Jobs arrive, jobs leave. Things happen. There will always be another challenge. And the question for us is, will, will you believe enough? Will you believe enough to step out? To step out and to trust God with everything you are and everything you have. As the psalmist reminds us, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And again, my question to you is, really, do you believe? Let's pray. Almighty God, we come to you in the craziness of this year. Listen to your call, to heed your call, uh, to trust in your promise of goodness in the future. And sometimes in the midst of what we are living through, it, it, it is difficult. Um, we find ourselves saying, I believe, help my unbelief. And we find ourselves not knowing what words to bring to you in prayer. But even in our weakness, we find that you surround us and that you lift us up. So Lord... Hear us this morning as we come to you. Help us in our struggles and in our unbelief. Lift us up in our weakness. Uh, give us the strength to have confidence and trust in you, to put one foot in front of the other in absolute faith as we move forward on this journey of faith that you have called us into. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we're going to have a, uh, I believe at this point is the response. There's a, a litany for dedication of our offering of ourselves to God as we move forward. I'm going to invite you to join with me in that. Uh, you will be reading the part that's in the lighter white, the brighter white. And uh, let us take this to God and be in prayer. Gracious and loving God, source of all that we have and all that we are, with you for your faithfulness to us. In response to your faithfulness in the past and in the present, we offer ourselves and our gifts, trusting that you will be faithful for the future. Receive these pledges and consecrate them to your purposes and plans. Align our desires with yours. Make your priorities our priorities. Bless us with the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit that we might give generously and joyfully, confident that your steadfast love endures forever. And now, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able and join with us in singing to the everlasting God.
everlasting God, the everlasting God, the everlasting God. So my brothers and sisters, as you get ready to go out there, man, I'm telling you, that wire is kind of scary. That water's rushing around under there. And, and, and for us, the challenge is believe. Believe. Trust in God enough to put your life in his hands and let God carry you across. Let God carry you. As you go forth, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. <laughs> Shalom to you now, shalom my friends, may God's full mercy bless you my friends, in all your living and through your loving, Christ be your shalom. Christ be your shalom. Christ be your shalom. Christ be your shalom. Shalom, shalom. Christ be your shalom.